see the Academy as being able to take the work that ANA initiates and um, really take it further. You know, ANA can only do so much as far as, you know, uh, making policies and governance and uh, addressing, uh, you know, X amount of topics. But uh, because healthcare is so varied and so, so vast, and there's things happening all the way around, I see it as the responsibility of the members of the Academy to take those certain things that they like to um, specialize in. If it's pediatrics, if it's research, if it's, uh, you know, certain illnesses and things and, uh, you know, go beyond what the American Nurses Association is able to do. I think the Academy is in a unique position to really augment the role that the American Nurses Association plays in the United States and around the world. Uh, ANA really is the, as you know, the foundation of what we believe is the most important professional association in the United States. And as the Academy has developed, which initially was, was I think, uh, almost exclusively honorific, but really has become uh, a, an important part of the brain trust of advising not only ANA and nurses of the United States, but all of healthcare uh, in, the, in the US, as well as, again, around the world. So I, I think there is a, a true synergy RWJ had a long-standing commitment to the Academy during the time of my tenure. We funded a number of important efforts from some early strategic planning work, a project called Technology Drill Down, a lot of work around the Edge Runners program, especially research and dissemination of best practices, focus groups on next generation leadership, the Leadership Institute, and some leadership and mentoring awards for outstanding work during COVID. It's very safe to say that the foundation considered the Academy and its membership the movers and shakers in nursing leadership and looked to the Academy to set the tone and the agenda for the most important topics of our time, including most recently, health equity. The foundation has always prided itself on tackling some of our country's toughest health issues and always considered the Academy as being the thought leadership on nursing issues and how best to get nurses engaged around these important issues. What I'm actually most proud of with the Academy is its courage in hitting issues directly, whether it be gun control, LGBTQ and trans, women's reproductive rights and structural racism. The work and efforts of the Center to Champion Nursing in America, which was created by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, AARP Foundation, and ARP, has grown alongside, for quite a number of years now, the American Academy of Nursing. And so while the Academy is celebrating 50 years, the Center to Champion Nursing in America is celebrating its 16th year. We have had much um, collaboration with the American Academy of Nursing and its members during that time. For one, I chaired the expert panel on aging, and along with my colleagues on that expert panel, we brought to ARP much of the research that nurses have done over the years on family caregiving, bringing evidence-based models of practice to ARP, which has now adopted family caregiving as one of its top priorities across the country. The most meaningful reasons of why it's important for AARP and the, the Academy of Nursing its uh, leadership, its board, and its uh, members, that we can work together and we do effectively work together um, to strengthen and now also diversify nursing, which also helps strengthen nursing, uh, the nursing workforce and improve access to care. When the country was thinking about uh, transforming care, the Affordable Care Act, this is when we went to, both Wynn and I, by the way, went to members of the American Academy of Nursing. To me, it's like one-stop shopping. You know, you have all of these thought leaders in many different areas of health and nursing practice that you can tap right into. I was very committed to was uh, making the journal an instrument of, for dialogue, for stimulating dialogue and debate. I think, you know, again, this has evolved over time, and I think there are 
uh, papers that can be used with our legislators and, and are used with our legislators on the Hill and that our students, our graduate students and, our, and actually our undergraduates who visit those offices can access. Um, so I think that the policy work really, policy always has to be, um, I'm, I'm not saying it always is, but it should be evidence-based. And that should be what the journal strives for, is to provide the evidence that will help uh, policymakers, members of the academy, members of the expert panels make the best decisions they can, given what the evidence is telling us. And so that's an important, such an important role of the journal and of the papers that are published in there. Well, CANS developed when the American Nurses Association closed their councils, and they had a very active council for nursing research, and then there was no national forum. The four regional societies were very active, and they were part of the planning process, as was Sigma and the Oncology Nurses, the American Foundation for Nursing, and we had strong support from NINR to develop. There was strong interest in developing this national voice. Folks, including myself, who are on the planning committee, uh, are very pleased, I think, with how CANS has developed over the years. So I think through the um, collaboration with other national organizations, that's also an extremely important part of how the Academy plays a role in impacting healthcare.